strengthening its hopes for economic recovery and job creation post-COVID-19 on the newly established automotive special economic zones. So let's keep focus on the Click story now. It has decided, as we've told you, to remove all Tresemme hair products from its shelves and to expand its range of local hair products. Now, for many South African entrepreneurs, getting their products into shops is an uphill battle, and multinational brands dominate the market in, in many respects. According to Proudly South African, buying patterns do not favor small businesses with constrained cash flows. But South African natural hair brand owner, Taryn Gill, uh, she joins us now via our Skype line to share her journey. We're also, in fact, in conversation with the Chief Marketing Officer at Proudly South African. That's Happy Ngidi. Uh, to both our guests, thanks very much for your time this morning. I think, Happy, in fact, let's begin with you. Uh, and you talk to us about, you know, it's easy to say that there's now shelf space open to local brands. But how open are these markets to Proudly South African products? You know, Michelle, it really is a uh, point to the fact that, you know, the struggle is real for, for small businesses, local small businesses in South Africa. Uh, and irrespective of which uh, sector it may be, whether it's skincare, whether it's laundry products, whether it's hair care, uh, you know, um, a, a shelf space and, 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 and for a lack of a better word, fighting for shelf space, uh, you know, in, in, in huge retail stores. Is a, is a persistent problem. And for us, um, you know, as proudly South African, it remains a, a work in progress, really, to try and, 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 and convince big retailers, you know, about the importance uh, of, of, of um, allocating or, or making sure that they give small businesses, uh, you know, shelf space. Because the reality is that most of these big re retailers have a lot of influence uh, with retail buyers. Because they represent, like I said, you know, various brands across all categories, uh, you know, uh, as mentioned, such as hair care, laundry, skin care. So, so there's alleged, um, uh, you know, issues of monopoly and bullying in the, in, you know, in, the, in, that, in that space. So, Taryn, let's, let's bring you into the discussion here. We've heard a lot about the difficulties in getting local brands onto shop shelves but you've had, as a natural hair brand owner, you've had quite the opposite experience. Well, this is true. It hasn't always been uh, the, th that way. I've, I've been trading now for six years, so you can imagine um, I've experienced my David and Goliath scenarios daily for the last six years. Nothing along the supply chain as a locally manufactured uh, small business is easy when you're coming across global multinationals who can easily and often will dominate the market um, and, and be very aggressive at price cutting strategies, which ensure that by the time you get to shelf, if you are lucky enough and stable enough as a business to get to shelf, that that is actually where the real uh, war begins, so to speak. Um, as, 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 as young South African brands, what we have as our ammunition in, in, in this retail landscape is um, the fact that we are connected to our shoppers. We know our shoppers and, 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 and scenarios like what has happened now uh, in pharma retail um, would never have happened if, 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 if content was, you know, led by us. We know our shoppers and, and, and that's as simply as, as I can put it. That is our USP. That is our cutting edge. We are pioneers. And um, quite frankly, it's, it's, it's not easy. Yeah. Taryn, give us a sense of, you know, you talk about it, it hasn't always been easy for you, but talk to us about those initial years and some of the biggest challenges you face. I imagine among the challenges is the level of trust from consumers for a new brand. You know, quite frankly, we, we had a series of, of, of years where we, where we really had lessons learned and we had a series of years where everything went right. And I have to tell you that the lessons learned came from places uh, along the supply chain where we had to learn to cost effectively. We had to learn to scale effectively. Um, managing your costs in, in a retail supply chain that is designed for, for, for bigger brands. Quite frankly, it's designed for the multinationals and it's not designed for small businesses that don't have a huge amount of cash flow or investment on hand. That is probably your biggest hurdle. 
that said, I have to say, breaking through was instrumental with with the with the clicks uh, uh, re- pharma retail chain. Clicks have been very instrumental in getting the brands who've managed to succeed in building their markets onto shelf. So you know, we 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 mustn't forget that though we sit right now in a in a hot mess of really um, racist and stupid and and and, and tone deaf messaging that's been released. Let's not forget that we all got to shelf, and well, at least three or four of us did um, two or three years ago, and 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 it was it was the click shelves that we went to first. Happy, I want to bring you into the the discussion now because what Taryn is talking about is an environment that really is designed for multinational companies that have big budgets for the kinds of advertising campaigns that we see from the likes of Tresemme hair products as well. What is the role or what should be the role of a company like Clix in also playing its part in convincing the consumer that proudly South African is the way to go? You know, um, Michelle, and, and it's unfortunate that, that you know, uh, a, a, a retailer such as Clix finds themselves in such a, an unfortunate mess. And it just points to, you know, what we've been saying is proudly uh, South African from, from day one, that, that, you know, South African products, uh, or at least South Africa, has got good products that are, that are good quality products and that are accessible and affordable. And, 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 and hence you have the likes of uh, Perfect, um, hence you have the likes of uh, Perfect Hair, <clears throat> Perfect Hair, which is one of our member companies, by the way. And that's, you know, um, you know, brands such as Perfect Hair that are associated with, with the buy local narrative or buy local campaign, which is proudly South African, uh, you know, can be trusted by consumers, can be trusted by big retail, retail, uh, retailers in South Africa, uh, by virtue of the fact that they carry the, the, the proudly South African logo, uh, which brings them or gives them brand credibility and trust. Uh, uh, but also the fact that, you know, uh, retailers such as Flix have a responsibility to pay their part and, and, and you know, and, 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 and afford uh, local brands, the shelf space that they, 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 they deserve. Because then it taps into a broader discussion. And the discussion is about the fact that we are dealing with, uh, you know, with, with uh, unemployment as it is. We're di- dealing with the, with the, with the an economy that it's at sea's uh, worst, um, and, and 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 that has got as much as there's a, there's a big um, uh, issue or a, a big reality re- in regards to COVID nineteen. But we all know that the economy of the country was in trouble long before COVID nineteen, and it takes uh, you know us as a people, as corporate South Africa, as uh, consumers, as local brands, to really assume responsibility and rethink our. Our, 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 um, you know, our purchasing decisions, first of all, as consumers, but as retailers, such as clicks, rethink your loyalty to, 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 to local products in an effort to ensure that they play their part in ensuring that the likes of a perfect hair who, who has, you know, people that are employed by them to ensure that they kept in those jobs and to ensure that we sustain the jobs that we have as, as South Africa uh, and, and contribute positively to the economy of South Africa. Because if we don't do that, if retail stores don't do that and, 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 and choose to uh, prioritize or imported products, they're essentially creating jobs in those countries where those products are coming from. What about our own economy? Who, who's supposed to take care of our own economy in South Africa? So it takes retailers. It takes uh, you know, businesses such as Perfect Hair. It takes the efforts of proudly South African. It takes the ordinary consumer to you know to, to pause for a bit and 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 you know and, and 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 rethink their loyalty to local products and to avoid this mess that is playing out in the public domain now which is unfortunately affecting you know ordinary employees that have got nothing to do with this uh you know because of a badly implemented marketing strategy that went horribly wrong no, and this is where we no to support proudly uh, south african products than now, just given the numbers we saw announced by Statistics Af- uh, South Africa just yesterday. Uh, Taryn, I want to bring you back into the discussion, and I, I want to ask you for your advice to an entrepreneur who wants to break into what really is such a saturated market, this category 
of natural hair care. You talked to us about your David and Goliath battles earlier, but how do you get that foot in the door? What's your advice? Look, this is a 7 billion rand industry. It's growing. By 2023, you would have seen at least a 30% growth on that number. And when we say it's saturated, it is saturated in the sense that you've got your locally manufactured products who really do resonate and they have the sentiment and they have the support of South Africans. Can I just say, Michelle, that I don't think there's ever been a time uh, other than now and going forward, I can only see it increasing where local sentiment to buy local, to support proudly South African brands, to physically get your money and your coin behind black female entrepreneurs has never been higher. And I'm, I, I couldn't be more confident going forward that a strategy uh, in tow with retailers where we can actually step in and help retailers um, develop their consumer insights more so that this stuff doesn't happen because that's where the, the room exists. The minute the retailers start to understand that we do have power, we do have the coin of our local, of our local shoppers behind us, um, and I think that you'll see more proudly South African drops coming into stores. And that means more entrepreneurs like me coming into the economy. You have to be resilient. Yeah. I mean, there's, if, if, if anybody thinks that this is a pretty game job about, about pretty hair, it's not. This is a cutthroat retail game, and you have to be on you have to be on top of it. I mean, you are competing against global giants. You are competing against other very fast local entrepreneurs. So you really have to know who you are, what you're delivering to the market, and be very, very persistent and, and agile in terms of how you grow your business. In, 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 and it's rough, but it's incredibly rewarding. And I have to say, I would encourage people who have a very strong business plan to jump in here because the time is now. The time is now that the retailers are waking up and saying, okay, we've got to bring our proudly South African brands to the fore. And as, as the perfect hair, we have every intention of working with those retailers to say, let us show you what this consumer is experiencing. Let us show you how to communicate to her and give her what she wants, because quite frankly, that's what we do best. Absolutely. We know how to communicate about our own hair. Thanks to both our guests for talking to us about what is really such an important issue. How do you break into such a saturated market and the role of consumers, of course, in supporting proudly South African brands and businesses? That's Happy Ngidi, who is the Chief Marketing Officer of Proudly South African, and Taryn Gill, who is the founder of Perfect Hair. Now, still to come for you this morning on the AM Report, the 9th of September is Fetal Alcohol Spectrum Disorder.